So emotional intelligence is a process of doing emotional labor to gradually move us outside of our, expand our comfort zone. And that helps us not only to develop our emotional intelligence, but it reconnects us with our authenticity, our authentic selves. Showing our emotions, being compassionate, being empathetic, isn't weakness, it's strength. It requires strength to be compassionate. It doesn't require strength to be controlling and manipulative. Raising the level of engagement of your employees, you will automatically, it will automatically lead to deepening the relationships and raising the level of engagement of your customers. And that is coming up next on Bootstrapping Your Dream Show, so stay tuned. So, the big question is this. How are ambitious people like us, who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? Use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. We have created a tremendous community of bootstrappers, entrepreneurs, and professionals who are ambitious, resourceful, and want to get things done. We brainstorm, support, and help each other out. So come join us. Navigate to bootstrapping.group. Join today and get the Startup Founders Technology Accelerator video series absolutely free. If you enjoy this video, then do let us know by hitting that like button now. Or if you want us to improve our content, then go ahead and hit that thumbs down button and give us your honest feedback in the comment section below. Here at Tata Noodle, we are passionate about entrepreneurship, technology, and innovation. Every week, we bring you insightful and engaging videos, interviews, tips, tricks, and strategies to help you grow your business or rise in your corporate profession. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing and do not forget to hit that bell icon so that you are notified when we publish new content. Hello and welcome to this new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dreams Show. I'm your host, Manuj Agarwal, and today we'll be talking with Phil Johnson. So Phil's central thesis is the development of authenticity and emotional intelligence, which leads to higher consciousness and what has been referred to as magical results. He contends that no one can produce results that are beyond their current level of consciousness, and I completely agree with that. For over two decades, he has been a passionate coach, speaker, author, and a podcast host. Uh, the Master of Business Leadership Coaching Program develops authentic leadership, emotional intelligence, and higher consciousness. Executives from around the world have described the MBL program as a very elegant system that works. Let's welcome Phil. Hi, Phil. Hi, Manj. Pleasure uh, to be here. We are, we are so glad to have you here. So. Tell me a little bit about uh, your story, your background. How did you get started in coaching? Uh, take us down the memory lane and and uh, give us a little bit of a glimpse of how you got started. <laughs> wow, that's a uh, that's a, I'm going to try and shorten the answer. Um, sure. I've been on this path for about a little over 51 years. Wow. I actually started down this path um, in January of 1968, and um, I was born with dyslexia, um, which actually, uh, back in those days, uh, there was no such thing as dyslexia or ADD. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, it turned out to be um, really important in what I do now because it helped me to develop my uh, emotional intelligence. Um, yeah. It's kind of like a blind person that develops excellent hearing. Yeah, because, yeah. Um, I had to rely more on my emotional intelligence than my my ability to do intellectual labor. And so uh, grade school was quite difficult for me up until actually my mother died in 1968. I was in grade seven. Uh, that year I became an A student and I got a BCom, most of an MBA, studied electrical engineering and uh, spent 25 years in the semiconductor industry, uh, generated over a billion dollars in revenue. And I left that industry as a, as a senior executive to, uh, to follow my passion. And my passion is what I've been doing for the last 20 years. 
working with executives and organizations around the world to develop their authentic, emotionally intelligent leadership, which leads to higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. How's that? That's awesome. So uh, tell us a little bit, let's dig a little bit deeper into uh, emotion, these concepts of emotional intelligence and higher consciousness. So let's talk about uh, higher consciousness first. A lot of people, you know, first of all, they don't even realize, you know, there is something that is inside us, uh, you know, this, this, this energy or uh, consciousness or whatever you want to call it, this life force. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, even if people realize that there is something going on, uh, there is not like a, a, a general awareness of there is, uh, you know, there are levels of consciousness. Uh, so can you unpack for uh, that for us? Like, what do you mean by levels of consciousness uh, for you know, people who are not? Yeah. You know, you're, you're absolutely correct. And I love, I love your question. Um, we don't know what we don't know. And um, we can only produce results up to our level of consciousness and no further. So, and on top of that, um, our educational system and our employment system has really not prepared us for the tsunami of change coming at us. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, our, our education and employment system has focused on our doing primarily intellectual labor. And it, it really has done nothing to help us go through the experiential process required to develop our emotional intelligence. And you can think of it this way, our, our intellectual intelligence and our emotional intelligence were meant to work together. Um, but, and by the way, intellectual intelligence is the ability to do intellectual labor is largely genetic. Um, the ability to do emotional labor, to, do, to develop our emotional intelligence is something that all of us can do. It's not genetic. It's based on our actions. And what happens is um, the way we develop our emotional intelligence is by doing the emotional labor of leaving our comfort zone on a regular basis. And that's uh, very challenging. There's, there's significant both biological and sociological resistance to our doing that. Um, what actually happens, and I won't go into it in any real detail, but what actually happens whenever we leave our comfort zone, there's a part of our brain called the amygdala that doesn't want us to do that. And so it secretes a hormone into our bloodstream called cortisol. And that causes the executive, our prefrontal cortex, the executive center of our brain to shut off. And we go into fight, flight, or freeze mode. And when that happens in conflict situations, um, people die. And when it happens in business or personal situations, relationships die. We burn trust. So emotional intelligence is a process of doing emotional labor to gradually move us outside of our, expand our comfort zone. And that helps us not only to develop our emotional intelligence, but it reconnects us with our authenticity, our authentic selves, as we're developing our higher conscious, as we're developing a higher and higher level of consciousness about what's going on in us and around us. So all of these things are happening simultaneously as you go through this process um, or methodology uh, that I've been working with executives on for. Um, over 20 years. Awesome. Let me also tell you, let me also say this. Um, nobody would ever do this work. Nobody would ever do the emotional labor required to develop our emotional intelligence and authentic leadership unless they had to. And the good news is, in some sense, we have to now. We're at a tipping point as a species. Uh, and that, number of scientists have estimated that in this century we may go through the equivalent of 20,000 years or 200 centuries worth of change. So change has gone from being occasional or episodic, uh, meaning that from the time somebody was born to the time they died, things were pretty much the same. Change was not that noticeable. Now change is increasing at an exponential rate. And we've got a 500 million year old brain that doesn't like change. 
So we have this tsunami of change coming at us that we cannot get out of the way of. Um, and the only thing we can do to have, to be able to have any opportunity to navigate our way through the anxiety that's producing is the development of our emotional intelligence. Because if, if you, the analogy is here, if you think of your amygdala as a very frightened four-year-old child, our emotional intelligence acts like a big brother or a big sister to quiet the amygdala response down and better enable us to feel the anxiety the change in innovation creates and move through it towards the vision of our desired results, as opposed to being controlled by that environment. And I'll just finally, I'll say this, and that's why more and more organizations are hiring, promoting, and developing emotional intelligence because they, they're recognizing they have no choice. Mm, I see. I see. So uh, now, you know, these are uh, very crucial times and uh, what you're talking about, they're very relevant to, to uh, what people really need to understand. Now, once again, uh, for people who are, you know, who are not initiated in this work or they may be wondering, like, what are we talking about? What, um, what kind of experiences they have or how, uh, how do they feel differently as they build up their emotional intelligence or they go, go into a higher and higher level of consciousness? How can they tell whether they are on the path or not? Engaged followers. Uh -huh. um, and uh, that's a very short answer that has a very long explanation. Um, and it's a great, another great question, by the way. The, um, as we do this emotional labor, um, we become less resistive, judgmental, and attached to outcome, and the drama, chaos, and conflict around us is reduced. Uh -huh. um, and there's, there's an underlying energy physics to all of this, but I won't, I won't get into that. Um, bottom line is, um, when we lower our walls, as we become more conscious, as we become more authentic and emotionally intelligent, we create a safer environment for the people around us to lower their walls. Mm -hmm. And um, we have these specialized brain cells called mirror neurons, brain scientists call them mirror neurons. Because we've grown, we've evolved in society, in herds, in tribes, we have this ability to sense uh, whether people are trying to help us or hurt us. Mm -hmm. So that as we, as we learn to lower our walls, um, the people around us begin to sense that they can lower their walls and be more of who they are around us than they can be around um, others. So it, it really inspires, uh, our actions um, inspire people to want to follow our example. And that's actually the, uh, the ultimate litmus test for leadership. Awesome, awesome. Um, so uh, now let's dive into a little bit of a tactical, um, tactical aspect of this. So um, can you share with us any, any steps people can sort of uh, take and incorporate into their lives to raise their level of consciousness and become more emotionally intelligent? Mm -hmm. um, sure. Right, begin. We need to begin to recognize that we are not our egos. We are not our the labels we give ourselves or other people have given us. And one of the ways to a habit to begin to start with uh, would be to not take things personally. Practice the habit of not taking things personally. How people feel about us have nothing to do with us. It has to do with what's going on inside of them. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody likes us or if somebody doesn't like us, that shouldn't impact how we feel about us. If, mm -hmm. if how we feel about ourselves is based on how others feel about us, we're really giving away our energy to them to determine how we should feel about us, yeah. which is really kind of crazy if you think about it. But we do it all the time. So... By learning to not take things personally and by recognizing that how somebody feels about us is a reflection of what's going on inside of them, it actually allows us to distance ourselves from our egos. It actually creates a space within us 
and we become less identified with our egos. And that allows us to stay in these conversations subjectively and also at the same time view the interactions more objectively. So again, it's kind of like it's a, it's a way of raising our consciousness. Yeah. And um, that helps to inspire leadership. That helps to inspire others to, uh, to lower their walls. It's uh, actually, I'll say this. Um, if somebody has their walls up, if they're being resistant, judgmental, and attached to outcome, the last thing we should be doing is allowing their walls being up to cause our walls to go up. If we keep our walls down, they need our walls to be up in order to keep their walls up. If we lower our walls, they have to lower theirs. There's an, inter there's an underlying energy physics. You should really try it. If you're in a conversation and, and one person, the other person is quite upset, if you remain calm, that will calm them down. But if you, if you allow their anxiety to cause you to raise your walls, it's kind of like mutually assured destruction. You're a, you, a, you end up attacking each other, and it escalates in what's called an amygdala hijack. Mm -hmm. so, that's, 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 that's an example. That's a great. Um, now, you brought up two very um, key terms that I want to uh, touch upon. One is ego, and one is energy. So, you know, you rightly pointed out that uh, most people identify themselves as their ego, as their name, or the title, um, or the possessions they have. And this concept of energy, like, you know, you mentioned we are giving our energy to them. And this, again, is a foreign concept to a lot of people. So, can you, can you help us understand? Um, what, who are we? Like, you know, when you, when you say, uh, identify yourself uh, separate from your ego, what does that really mean? And what do you mean by energy exchange? Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to explain, um, and uh, thank you for your question. I'm going to take this opportunity to explain the central thesis of the MBL program and the development of authentic, emotionally intelligent leaders and higher consciousness. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Okay. When we're born, we're not born consciously. Our consciousness doesn't kick in until a year or so after we're born. We're born with an unconscious mind, and we begin immediately wiring up our brain. We begin immediately, through our actions, mimicking our environment, to survive, to get, to, to get food, to fit in, to get love, acceptance. Um, we begin creating the habits, the, the neural network pathways in our brain that become our habits. And a lot of those habits are what I call victim habits. They're habits that cause us to raise our walls and give away our energy. And when we do that, it creates an energy deficit in us. So when we're giving away our energy over here, simultaneously, we're creating other habits to steal the energy of other people over here. And that dynamic is going on everywhere, in everyone, all the time, all over the world. And that's the root cause problem of all the drama, chaos, and conflict we see everywhere. So what the MBL program, what the Master of Business Leadership program does is it shows people how they're giving away their energy and it provides them with better habits to practice to stop doing that. And you see, when you stop giving away your energy over here, your need to steal the energy of other people goes away. You don't need it because you're not giving them yours. Yeah. And that's how you lower your walls. You become less resistant, judgmental, or attached to outcome. Another term for that is enlightened. Mm -hmm. As you do that, you become enlightened. And um, that develops your authenticity, emotional intelligence, raises your consciousness level, and inspires. And the results that that generates, the magical results that that generates, inspires others to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, now I'll, I'll be a devil's advocate here and, uh, you know, talk about where the society in general 
um, when somebody shows their emotional side, they're considered weak or you know not a not a not a strong leader, if you will. So you know, if you're talking about executives and if we're talking about people who are in leadership roles, um, if they uh, start to portray the, their their emotional side, don't you think that um, they appear as if they are sort of weak leaders, or how do they how do they counteract that? How do they uh, overcome this hesitance or or the norms that society has set for for this type of work? Let me let me challenge you. Mm -hmm. Let me challenge your question. Okay. By asking you a question, is what we've been doing working? Is well, is, I mean, take a look at it. Gallup, according to Gallup, the current level of employee engagement is, is less than 13% worldwide. Yeah. Um, look at the results we're generating. You can't possibly think that our approach isn't killing the planet. There isn't a single species on the planet that wouldn't be better off if we weren't here. And unfortunately, that's, you know, we know that if we're being honest, we know that. So the point is that what we've been doing isn't working and we're at a tipping point. And getting back to your question, the emotion, in showing our emotions, being compassionate, being empathetic, isn't weakness, it's strength. It requires strength to be compassionate. It doesn't require strength to be controlling and manipulative. That's how we create toxic environments. Showing compassion and engagement, learning to lower our walls, is how we create highly engaged environments. And it's actually how we learn to out-care our competition. Mm, I see. Um, so just to clarify my question, it's uh, first of all, I do agree with your uh, premise uh, completely, 100%. I was talking about you know people who are um, so this is what I have noticed in my experience where somebody who has uh, become successful in terms of uh, you know their professional progress or monetary terms um, they consider themselves to be you know they are uh, they have proven to the world or and themselves that you know they 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 know what uh, or you know they they know how life works basically and so to tell somebody like that hey you need to uh, change your uh, um, change your emotional intelligence level and raise your consciousness. It may sometimes uh, come back as you know. Why do I need this? Because I've I'll already, I've already I'll got. I'll tell you why, and I'll give you sure. some empirical results. Sure, sure. Because the results they've been getting, whatever the results they've been getting, are a fraction, are a small fraction, of the results they could be getting. And the results they've been getting are coming at a huge cost mm. to themselves, to the people around them, to their organizations. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for instance, let's say you're a corporation and you've got 10,000 employees. Yeah. And the loaded labor rate per employee, when you take into account salaries and benefits and training and everything else, Let's say it's $100,000 a year. So that company is spending a billion dollars a year on compensation. Yeah, yeah. Okay? If their level of employee engagement is 13%, yeah. they're wasting $870 million a year. They've got to spend a billion dollars for $130 million worth of effort. And I can tell you for a fact, Low levels of employee engagement are costing the North American economy alone hundreds of billions of dollars every year with no end in sight. Yeah. And Gallup has also determined that there's almost a one-to-one -one correlation between the level of customer sorry, the level of employee engagement and the level of customer engagement. So if your employees aren't engaged, and in most organizations they're not, then neither are your customers. So by raising the level of engagement of your employees, you will automatically, it will automatically lead to deepening the relationships 
and raising the level of engagement of your customers. Yeah. So the lack of the lack of emotional intelligence, the lack of authenticity is creating a huge and up until now largely ignored cost. And they know it. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah. yeah. Oh, one, the other thing I wanted to mention is historically the, um, the value of an organization has been about two, twice its net asset value. When you add up all the tables and chairs and everything, buildings, um, that's what investors have been willing to pay for organizations. But now in some organizations, the value is 40 or 50 times its net asset value. And that's in a reflection that investors are now look, looking and putting a, a price tag on a value on the, the culture within the walls of that organization as a reflection of current and future success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, one of the figures that I heard was around $7 trillion lost uh, around the globe due to low engagement rates uh, from employees. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so here, back to the energy physics. Yeah. If people, if executives, organizations, if individuals aren't willing to do the emotional labor required to reconnect with their authenticity, develop their emotional intelligence, and raise their level of consciousness, the only other alternative they have, which is what they use most often, is to try and use position-based power to control and manipulate others. So in other words, what, that, what it means is that if you're not willing to change yourself, if you're not willing to challenge yourself to do the emotional labor that change requires, what you end up doing is trying to, you, trying to control everybody else and trying to get them to change. And that simply doesn't, hasn't, and will never work. It creates a toxic work environment that is unsafe that leads to high levels of employee engagement. The level of employee engagement in the last 15 years, by the way, has gone down over 50%. Wow. So we're not going in this direction. Yeah. We're going in this direction, which yeah. gives you an idea of how important what it is we're talking about is. And with the tsunami of change coming at us, if we're not actively looking to develop our emotional intelligence, we don't have a chance. We don't have a chance. We are gonna see more change faster than we can possibly imagine. And we are totally, completely, absolutely, unprepared for it. And what's worse, our kids are going to have it far worse than we do because we're doing nothing to prepare them. We're kind of like, we're whistling our way through the graveyard and we're leaving a dead cat on the doorstep of future generations. And we have to stop. We have to challenge ourselves to do the very difficult emotional labor that change in innovation requires, not only so we can generate better results as individuals and organizations, not only so we can progress in our careers, but for everybody we come in contact with, including our family members. Yeah, cool. Uh, now, let me talk, uh, talk about another uh, sort of uh, question which may be a little bit controversial. Uh, why only focus on uh, leaders, leaders and executives? Because uh, from from what I can tell, you know, these skills are needed even for employees, Great uh, question. whether whether they are managing somebody or not, right? So, um, <clears throat> like, if, if the employees raise their own emotional intelligence, higher level of consciousness, they may actually affect the leadership as well, right? Yep. Uh, great question. And actually, um, about 30 years ago, 40 years ago, I was doing that. Um, I was in the forefront of the personal development industry. Uh -huh. But invariably, people kept talking about wanting to improve their business results. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
they were less interested in their own personal results. They're, they're, um, they were more interested in making more money or career advancement or things like that. So I said, okay, I'll help you do that. And the personal stuff I'll throw in for free. I see. You see, they, they were more interested in ways to make more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, I can show you how to do that. Um, and by the way, not only will you make more money, but everything else in your life will improve as well. You get that as, you get that as a bonus. I see. I see. So that's a, that's a pretty good marketing tactic, I guess. But you're feeding them the right medicine that they need. Actually, you know, you, you do allude to a good point. It would be far easier if we began developing the emotional intelligence of our kids mm -hmm. from infancy. Yeah. And definitely in grade school and high school and university and beyond. At every level, it would be better. Um, but we're not doing it. So I'm trying to help change the adults so that it will have a positive impact on their on their kids on their families on on their on their life outside of work see we're not two people the same set of habits we carry with us at work are the same set of habits we carry home we don't have two sets of habits sure sure that's yeah. great um uh, now uh, we are almost over time but uh, maybe one of the last questions so you brought up kids um do you have any suggestions that uh, that you can share in terms of how uh, we can raise our kids with a higher level of uh, emotional intelligence, yep. help them out at an early stage. As Gandhi said, Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in others. Yeah. The best thing you can do for everybody is focus on developing the authenticity and the emotional intelligence within yourself first. Yeah, yeah. And that will inspire the results that you generate in doing that will inspire others to want to do the same. We need more role models that reflect authentic, emotionally intelligent leadership. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing that thought. Uh, it has been an amazing uh, conversation. I learned a lot and it was uh, quite entertaining actually for me. Um, now, before I let you go, can you tell us how people can reach out to you? Yeah, um, they can reach uh, they can reach me on LinkedIn, uh, either through my company, Master of Business Leadership Incorporated, or just Phil Johnson, or they awesome. can um, they can reach me via Skype at MBL Coach, so MBL C O A C H, and I'd be happy to uh, to meet and continue the conversation reach out to you easily. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. And that's all for now. Until next time. Now, if you're an entrepreneur or a career professional, then I invite you to join our growing community. Navigate to bootstrapping.group. As a welcome bonus, you will get the Startup Founders Technology Accelerator video series and Mastering Your Inner Game video series absolutely free. This series of short videos address some core issues which are instrumental in helping you move forward in your business or career. The videos are yours to view and share for free. No obligations or strings attached except for one. You have to take action and implement it. So join us today. Navigate to bootstrapping.group. If you want more engaging videos and insightful interviews with industry's thought leaders, then check out the other videos we have picked for you. The link is right there. And if you want to be notified about our new content, please do consider subscribing to our channel.